Hey everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net. Okay, so today I'm going to show you what I've been looking for, um, trying to find ways to send messages between uh, J4X from D Duca's copy, the trading platform, uh, at the same time, send messages between my client programs and J4X. Specifically, I'm talking about orders. So what they've suggested he under here under practices they have a couple of examples on to do that via socket programming. Now I've shown that socket programming in my C++ playlist uh, last month, all the different options, including uh, the Python, but I'm just going to show you some of the examples here. Uh, this one is a socket connection. Uh, sorry, there's a simpler one. Uh, where is it? Yeah, me, no, hang on. I'll get it. Here we go. So this is the simple one, uh, and, and the documentation is pretty good. It's a lot better than what you'd get from a WANDA, and it'll walk you through the process, and then there's also uh, transferring your messages. So there's that. But then there's a more sophisticated one where it's a socket channel using the same idea. This is the actual strategy that you would use within... J4X is the very first one called socket strategy, and it's of course using the um, the API from for J4X. So it's got all that code, and then at the bottom here, you will find a socket client, which is the program that you would typically use. Be it, this is in Java, but you could do it the same in in um, Python or whatever language. So you can definitely do it this way. So I just wanted to. Uh, demonstrate this to you and how to set it up. So here, this is the typical starting point you'd get in J4X. So what you're looking for is the tab for socket strategy. Oh, I'm sorry, under strategy. So let me just expand this. So here you have the two uh, strategies that I've copied and downloaded. Um, there's this one and then there's this one. This one is a simple socket strategy first one I just showed you this is the one that's actually using the client so if I edit it uh, okay guess I don't need to edit it but typically what you'll need to do is in this folder here uh, wherever your in my case on Mac, it would be under library, application support, J4X strategies, files. So usually it's going to be under J4X strategy files. And that's where all your strategies will, will live. So, so basically what you have is if I do an LS, we are looking at this one right here. The, the socket client. So it's pretty straightforward. Exact same code that, you, that I showed in, in the website. Um, and it does some buys and orders that I'll show you in a minute. There's that. Then what I also did in a NetBeans project, I created a new class and I created the socket client here. So this program, the socket client Java, will communicate with this strategy uh, the socket strategy uh, file, Java file. So let me just uh, launch this. Actually, let me launch the one in J4X first. So if I do a local run, it's going to give me the standard port number uh, and then run it. So here it's under socket strategy. You can see from previous sessions I've got uh, the buy order, sell buy, and it's, it's a Saturday, so the markets are closed. But if I launch this program, so off it goes to run. I think it downloads some from Maven. So right now, it's telling you that now it's buying and receiving in the market. So those are the messages. 
So you can see here, if you look at the log, uh, today's the 28th. So this is going to be Switzerland time. Okay. So it's just to tell you that one in the morning over in Switzerland that it's buying and selling your uh, stock, which is the euro, US dollar, and um, yeah. So I believe, I don't know, where's the quantity? Market, local computer, system is currently unavailable. Please try again or, okay, so that's, that's because the market's closed, right? This is against a demonstration account, but it is, it has, it is working as you can tell. Um, and I think there's a buy and a sell. So here in the log, we'll get both buy, sell, finish, done. So they do work. Uh, this is exactly what I was looking for. To be honest, my only concern about it is when you put an order in or a sell from this client, uh, it's, it's going through a socket. Sometimes that message may get dropped and get missed. That's why I like going through a database so that can kind of get logged. So I may try to figure that out, but that can easily be controlled from this socket client Java program. And if it does get dropped or that message doesn't get sent over, um, you can um, resend it, I guess. So you do have that kind of control. I think there is a, a, a message in there that confirms the receipt of the message of the order. Um, I haven't gone through this in great detail, but um, there is that capability. But I just wanted to show you, because of turning out to be pretty good documentation from Duke's copy to show you all these capabilities of what J4X can do, uh, it's quite good. Um, so again, let me just refresh everyone. If you haven't seen my previous video on this, this is how we send orders or the ticks or whatever uh, market data from J4X and, and get it saved in a CSV and then have my other process be it in, let's say, Python, pick up those uh, orders found in these flat files or CSVs, comma separated of value files. We can then feed those into the Python scripts and do your analysis and calculations or whatever get a trading decision. And now through the, 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 the power of socket programming, we can push back those orders through the socket that um, J4X will listen to to submit the orders into the gateway of J4X or, or of Duca's copy, as you can see here through these capabilities. So it's pretty good. Just wanted to show you that. And um, yeah, that's how we can do it. So we pretty well got the market data covered. We also now have the orders. These are different examples. So if you want to get the links, just go to my blog. There'll be a, a link somewhere in the video description on how to do that. Um, let me do it this way. Also, if you're interested in knowing more about different options from Duca's copy for this sort of thing. Just go to my blog and do a search on notes. In there, what I've been doing is I've been tracking uh, all the different options and capabilities you can do this from various different methods. This is a pretty, pretty important um, uh, posting. But in there, you'll also find these two links on, on the socket programming. But there's a bunch of others on top of it. So here, uh, the other way is through sockets right here. So these are the two links I showed in this video. Okay, so they're all there. Um, and uh, hopefully this will help you out. I'll talk to you later.